uh, for the purposes of this webinar, uh, we'll just cover kind of what's inside the Works plugin suite whenever you uh, do an install. Uh, so we we did some work to update the initial install for Sheetworks to include some out of the box content like loop drawings, junction box drawings, and remote I/O drawings. So everything I'm showing you today, you can actually just uh, open up the plugin, hit the run button, and then generate the same results. So you'll kind of see what's inside that uh, plugin itself. Uh, we'll we'll uh, spend some time discussing how the actual drawing generation works with Sheetworks. So how do we actually choose what block to use? Where are those blocks coming from? How do we choose where to position each block? We'll talk about those little unique things in this session as well. And then how do you put together all the data that's required for Sheetworks? Uh, that'll be a very interesting topic just to discuss. Uh, you could either use a database or not. It really doesn't matter, but we'll, we'll cover a couple different options on how to go about that. So uh, before I go to the demo, which will be pretty short because it's all set up and ready to go, let's talk about just drawing generation as a whole and how it works with Sheetworks. So uh, these steps, there, there's four major steps, really three, but the fourth one is just hitting the go button inside Sheetworks itself. So uh, at a high level, you have to, on the first, on the left, you have to create your CAD templates. And every time I say template, what I'm talking about is a CAD DWG file, so a drawing file itself. When I say worksheet, what I mean is an Excel worksheet. So you have to design your data worksheets, right? How you want the data to be, to be configured, each column inside the worksheet itself for whatever you're trying to produce. And then you have to design your templates. So your templates uh, are what kind of drawings you're creating. Are you creating a junction box drawing? Are you creating a loop drawing? And so on. And then you pick what blocks you want to use. So you need to know what that block name is called and what attributes are inside that block. Those are the two important things to know. And then after you've got that set up, so you know what kind of templates you can create, then you can go to the second step where you basically start to collect all of your data. So you talk about uh, how many drawings that you want to create, right? Uh, since I'm doing electrical drawings here, I'm really collecting instrument data. So uh, we'll talk about the interface that I'm using here, which is uh, SocketWorks, which is a way for me to uh, kind of peek into uh, some PNID data that's already been generated for, for electrical drawings. And then I can tee off of that and then add more data uh, to it in order to create my initial worksheet. But uh, in here, I'll also put you know, what block I want to use and the position of that block. And then I'll, I'll hit a button inside SocketWorks to just Excel, to go directly to Excel to create a data worksheet. And then that data worksheet is what I'm reading right in the Sheetworks. So at a high level, uh, most of the work here is done on the front end, right? Just creating the CAD template itself. How you go about collecting the data the unique thing here is that we're going to talk about SocketWorks as a potential vehicle for you to get all your data uh, connected together in one spot where you can very quickly create an Excel worksheet off of it. But this is primarily what, what a Sheetworks is going to read. So as long as that data is formatted correctly in Excel, we can produce drawings off of it. So what does that look like? How do you actually create the, the drawings inside of Sheetworks? Well, I think it's just demo next. Yep, OK. I'm just going to escape out, minimize this, minimize everything. I'll go into AutoCAD. I'm just running AutoCAD 2018. Um, Sheetworks works on 2019. I think it works up to AutoCAD 2015, I believe, or 2016. There's uh, We really don't care about the version of, of AutoCAD that you're utilizing. Uh, I could be running off of CADWorks as well. It does, makes no difference, or BricsCAD, like we mentioned before. So to open this palette, all I did is I, I installed the plugins, and then I clicked on Sheetworks, and then it popped up here. So you'll see four tabs on the left-hand side. The first one is just my variables for what I'm what directories I'm looking at. So where are the Excel worksheets located? I pick my directory. Where are my CAD templates located? I pick the directory. These templates are like uh, my initial template for what a loop drawing is, for a junction box drawing. And there's a couple more in here that we've got for you as well. And then my completed drawings, where, the, where do you, I want those to go. 
and then the block drawing itself. So this block drawing contains all of the unique CAD blocks that I'm pointing to inside the worksheets. So this is a pretty simple process to actually use SheetWorks once it's set up. You click Produce Drawings. I'll just go ahead and select all. Um, I've got a junction box worksheet. That's going to create my junction box drawings. I've got a IO card uh, worksheet. This will create my remote IO card drawings. And then a uh, basically just a worksheet to create loop drawings as well. When I click OK, I'll watch it run here in the lower left. So you can see it change as it processes each sheet. We'll take a look at the Excel sheets themselves and compare it to the data that we see inside CAD in a second. And it looks like it's almost done. So I don't know how, how long it was, maybe like 10 seconds, but I've got 10 remote IO drawings. I've got 12 or 13 loop drawings, and I've got 10 junction box drawings that were just created. So let's let's take a look at a couple of each, right? I'll, I'll go into a loop drawing so you can see one of those. This is a little bit uh, simpler, these loop drawings, because there's not many, really uh, positions for each block. Uh, what is unique here is that the all of the information that you're looking at that's an attribute driven is populated from Excel. So if I were to explode, actually, I'll just copy this first and then explode it so you can see. I'll explode all of this data. So really, uh, what we're reading here is uh, function, tag, and fill mode. That was all inside Excel to generate this FIT 1020 that you're seeing here. And the same thing for everything in the process area and the control room. All the this information is just driven from Excel itself. And then the remote IO drawings, let's just pull one of those up to see what it looks like. These blocks themselves can be very unique in how they're they're generated. And so uh, SheetWorks actually tells, uh, yeah, the Excel worksheet tells SheetWorks what block to use and what data to populate here on each block itself. So GPX 1100, 1100, 1200, 1200. And these are all going if, uh, to different flow elements, 1121, 1120, 1122, 1220. Uh, the, the Really, the unique thing is just the data on here, but the format and the structure of the Excel worksheet is the part that's changing. So look at a couple different RIOs. See, this one is reversed, right? So here's the this particular drop is remote IO1, uh, slot 5, and that's the card. So all of that was also driven from Excel. And this one, I've got a couple spares here for this slot 8. So I can see all the spares that I've got. And uh, these blocks that I've positioned in space, I could have shown you on the, on the junction box drawing, but I'll show you here on this remote IO drawing. There's actually a little circle in space inside CAD that was set up in the template. And what this does is it tells SheetWorks where that position is located. So it's on a layer called positions that's non-plotting. So this will never show up inside a drawing if you PDF it. And it's got a name. So that name was called out in Excel. And that's how we know where to place each block in space. So it's uh, a bit of effort to get up to this point where I can just click one button and then it generates multiple drawings, but it's very nice to see it uh, all complete because it's a very quick and rapid way to complete uh, quite a bit of work at once. So I was gonna go back and just uh, show you those four steps, right? The first step was creating the CAD templates itself and your worksheet templates. So now that we've created some work, let's take a look at what it took to get to this point. I'm gonna pop open uh, a couple of these uh, templates or the worksheets themselves just so we can take a look at one of them. So uh, let's take this loop uh, drawing template, for example. I'll just open this in Excel. And here's all my different loops. I just did a quick sort here at the top. But uh, let's just um, pick on one like 1120. I'll click OK. So for loop 1120, did I open that one up? I didn't, so let me find it in the list. So everything it took to actually uh, put this on paper or, or to create this template is just these five lines. So I've got uh, the loop name, the drawing name, 
which is more like the PNID drawing name that uh, this loop came from. Uh, the function, right, is there as well. The loop sort tag, all of my uh, terminal strips, my, my cabling is all sorted in here as well. And then my information for my title block is here at the end. So how do you know, how do you match up each column to where it actually physically goes on the paper? Well, I showed you that a second ago. What I, what I did is I, I didn't explode, right? And then based on what block I'm using, that allows me to know uh, what column to use here because the, the block, uh, the attribute name itself is here at the top, right? LS tag, LS WCBLA, LS WJBA, and so on. I'm just using that same attribute that's mapped here uh, that's in the exploded block itself. So uh, putting together all this data in one sp spot where it's um, easily modified if required, or you get updates as soon as it happens to the project, uh, what we're doing is we're using SocketWorks as a way to just tee up the data that SheetWorks consumes in order to create these drawings. So after you've created the templates, right, all your drawing templates have been generated, and now you're ready to start to collect the data and bring it together for the project. Uh, you can use a tool like SocketWorks in order to accomplish that. So uh, this IO card sheet that you're looking at is, that's populated with all these different rows, this mimics exactly what I showed you here inside. Oh, let me show you the loop one instead. Yeah, here's the, the loop uh, worksheet, right? So this loop worksheet mimics exactly what you're seeing here inside the Excel sheet. And we've built this web interface uh, really as a way to reach into existing databases and then pull data out of it, uh, such as uh, instrument bubbles on PNIDs. And then what we're doing is we're just populating additional data uh, to that we can use inside of SheetWorks itself. So everything that you're looking at here, all these data records, you can see the drawing name where it, it originally came from. So this loop, this 1120, that came from PNID 100, PID 1100.dwg. So that's where it came from. Everything that else here that I've got as a column at the top, this is data that I've inputted manually. Actually, our uh, uh, we've got a, a designer uh, in Chicago, uh, Nate Patton, who did a ton of work to get this set up for me. Thanks, Nate. Uh, but all of this, all of the column data that you're looking at here, is set up uh, in SocketWorks itself so that I can quickly just say export and then create a new worksheet that I can create all my drawings based off of. So uh, you could edit this inside the interface if you wanted. So it, it's not just a view only type thing. Like if I wanted to make some edits to FY1120, FY1120, I could make those edits and then save and close export. And now that would be the new attribute that we filled in for this, this W cable A column. I don't want to make that edit though. I'm going to go ahead and close this, discard it. But uh, any edit you want to make is possible. Uh, when I export this, this will just export directly to my inbox. So it, it just sends me an email with that worksheet. You can see it's processing now. And then that Excel worksheet is what I can connect to whenever I use SheetWorks. So the data here, uh, this grid form, is just one way to view all that data that resides within that database itself. If I wanted to take a look at this drawing, this 1100 drawing where that loop is located, I can click this little PDF button, and then this is going to pull the actual PDF that was PDF'd out by the designer uh, for this project. So this PDF contains that 1120 loop that uh, I wanted to uh, read information from. And I can see the, the information here on the right-hand side. So 1120 is the tag. The function is a flow indicating transmitter. I really don't have a lot of information that the, the designer put in uh, on the PNID itself that I can pull from that database. So what I did is uh, what I said before. I basically took that initial tag. So I got a, a good count of how many transmitters and instruments I had. And I was able to populate additional information that's also stored in the database that I can then create an Excel sheet from and then kick it over to SheetWorks. So uh, 
this, and then once that's been done and generated, all of these drawings that you're looking at, like this loop drawing, 1120, you could then PDF these out as well. And then inside the SocketWorks database, I think I've got it here. Oh, it's 1020, it's a different one. I could then show this inside the same web environment as well. So there's a little bit of work in CAD just to PDF, but once you've done that, I can just store this and then tee this up in the browser just to verify that all the information is correct. So what we're trying to do is uh, not only unsilo the information, but then centralize it in a manner where whoever needs to look at the information on this project has access to do exactly that. So uh, that is that is kind of how we're setting this up for now. And there's also some annotation tools that I could do here if I needed to, you know, make some edits to this. I could uh, tell users, hey, you know, go take a look at this and and edit the the data behind it so that I can run SheetWorks again, something like that. But um, yeah, this is kind of the end goal, just getting to a point where you've got a created drawing in a way where anyone can access it and uh, take a look at what's been done. So that was probably steps uh, one and two. And the third step was generating an Excel worksheet, which I did with, by clicking export. And I said export again. It should be in my inbox right now for the one I created for the loop drawings. So I'll check that. I can see her here at the top. This is the quick report that I created for the loops webinar. So I can just hit the download button on that. And this is just an Excel sheet, right? If I open the other one I had originally, I didn't make any changes, so this should match pretty well. But uh, yeah, it's just a assorted sheet that came directly from that web interface from an existing database that was created. So uh, this new sheet that I created here, I could actually store this where I'm putting all my worksheets for this webinar. So if I go to my downloads, move this guy over here. Oh, can't have it open when you move. There it is, 12.05 PM, that's the one I created. And then if I wanted to, I could go back to AutoCAD. I'm just going to run a close all command on these so I can delete them. And then uh, we've got our little recycle button here because it's, it's good to be um, conscious of the environment, right? Just kidding. And then uh, I can hit produce drawings, click that sheet, click OK. And take a look at just the 1120 drawing, and here it is. So the data that, re that resided inside SocketWorks quickly pushed it out to Excel and quickly created drawings based off of that. So that's that's kind of the whole workflow from zero to 100 percent to create drawings with SheetWorks. Uh, again, everything that I've shown you today, these three different types of drawings, you can create these uh, in that. Uh, new install of the works plugins that we've just published. So uh, you'll be able to basically just out of the box, you won't even have to path to anything. You just hit produce drawings and then every the, all these drawings will just fall out for you. So yep, that is uh, kind of the end of the content I had to share for this webinar. So let me, uh, let me go back to the PowerPoint real quick. Let's make sure I covered everything. So yep. We looked at the CAD templates, we looked at SocketWorks, we looked at Excel, and then we hit the process button. So I was kind of reflecting off this uh, content that we did for SheetWorks for this webinar, and really using SheetWorks is just two major steps, right? So there's creating your templates and then actually using SheetWorks itself. And this is a product that it'll accumulate value over time, depending on how much time you spend setting up your templates. So once that's completed, and that's really the most of the effort is just right there, completing those templates, your efficiency goes, just goes way up because now instead of taking time uh, generating each CAD drawing manually, potentially making errors, potentially making mistakes, you know, taking time just to generate the CAD content, all of that content just exists in one sp spot where you're programmatically creating all your, all your drawings themselves. So yeah, again, all these templates are in the plugin, so you can take a look at what we did. 
and kind of reverse it if you want to create your own templates, which is really what we built the tool for. It's not just electrical drawings. This could be done for any type of drawing. Anything that's uh, template driven that you want to, or you want to drive via a template, you can do with Sheetworks. And if you need some assistance, just getting over this additional, this uh, hurdle, right? Just to create the CAD templates themselves. Uh, this is something that we can offer as a service or turnkey it for you. So with, with Sheetworks itself, we can help you get to the point where you're just in this phase, just using Sheetworks with those templates and then reaping that efficiency.